Thank you. Um, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Commissioner Nakagiri. Here. Commissioner Griffith. Present and in participating from Genoa Township due to medical conditions. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Reeder. Participating from Deerfield Township due to medical issues. Commissioner Helzerman. Uh, Commissioner Drick. Here. Commissioner Zajac. Here. Commissioner Gross. Present. Commissioner Plank. Here. The quorum is present. Thank you. Um, Item number five on the agenda is correspondence. This evening we have three pieces of correspondence, one from Ingham County, one from Delta County, and one from Gratiot County. I'm looking for a motion to receive and place on file. Support Gross. Motion by Commissioner Helzerman, support by Commissioner Gross. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, item number six is um, closed session. Uh, <coughs> a closed session to discuss a written legal opinion, MCL 15.268H. Um, I need a uh, motion to allow us to go into closed session. So moved, Plank. Support Zajac. Motion by Commissioner Plank, support by Commissioner Zajac. I believe we need a roll call on yes, this. Sir. Commissioner Plank. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Reeder. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Drick. Yes. Commissioner Zajac. Yes. Commissioner Griffith. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Motion carried. We'll um, let um, Cindy. Go ahead and um, move on in the agenda. Next item up is item number seven. It's called to the public. So anybody wishing to address the Board of Commissioners, um, if you provide us with your um, name and uh, township, we'll provide you with three minutes uh, and I'll be the timekeeper. Robert Sexton, Brighton Township. I'm sure you know I'm here to address the issue that I had in my letter that I sent to the County Commission about my concern when it came to appointments. As I've been watching the appointment process, it for the first time in my life made me feel like I was being actively excluded by a group. I'm over 70 and I've never had that feeling before. I'm not going to go into all of the history of it because it's all certainly in, in my letter, but I am going to say that uh, I really appreciated the call from uh, Councilman uh, Helzerman, and I certainly appreciated the information that I received. I was surprised, first of all, that when I applied for the position on the Planning Commission, that it was not listed as an education position. That I didn't find that out until I received the phone call. Secondly, I was shocked to hear 
that they were that you were going to reopen the posting because in the past it just had not seemed to be anything that you were interested in doing. When I found that the, the new requirements for the posting that it be a person who was on a school board or an administrator, I realized that that excluded me, even though I had over 35 years in education and had experience uh, with education in a lot of different settings, including college, high school, middle school. And so I felt like, wow, if, whether that was the case or not, it certainly felt like it was to exclude me. And like I said, I've never had, I've never ever had that feeling before. Now, it doesn't mean because I apply for something, I think that I'm going to be selected. I understand. In my lifetime, I've applied for lots of things that I didn't receive. It's just that this was the first time I felt like I maybe wasn't being treated fairly. And this is the first time I felt like perhaps because of my political affiliation and my political philosophy, I was not going to be included. And the difficulty is, while we're not a majority, I do, is that when I ran for office, I received 35% of the vote. Democrats are about a 40% of, of Livingston County. Their opinions deserve to be heard, whether it's on this commission or it's on other commissions. The reason I'm applying for positions is I ran for the board seeking to bring that voice. Uh, when I was, when the, it became available to apply for and to interview for, I did, hoping to be a voice. I understood I wasn't selected. You have 15 seconds. Okay, finally, finally, I decided, well, I would apply for positions primarily because I had five people from the commission say, there are a lot of openings on these boards and we need people. And so I thought, well, I was being encouraged to apply. And so that's why I've been doing it. And that's why I would continue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? You provide your uh, name and- You forgot to sign it. The sign is to um, help the clerk with the spelling. Hello. You give us your name and township. You will have uh, three minutes. My name is Anna Penela. Um, just for a fun fact, I applied to. Um, anyway, here tonight, I would like to talk to you um, about quarantines again. <laughs> um, as a mother of four children, and um, I have a lot of uh, friends, lots of kids. I know lots of kids in this county who, who need your help. <laughs> I think that the power resides with you guys. I am literally praying that you can help us. Um, I've done a lot of research. Um, I'm gonna share with you some of my findings. Um, I would like to know specifically the MCL code that the health department is using to keep our kids in quarantine. Um, because what I've discovered is that the health director answers to the county commission. You guys are the elected um, power. There's no way that an appointed position would supersede an elected position, especially nine of you. Um, and I did some research on this and based on Michigan law, the county commission constitutes a local governing entity. Under Michigan health code, um, also under Michigan law, the local health department is created by the county commission or the local governing entity. <coughs> So if you look at MCL code 333.2413, it acknowledges that the county commission has primacy over and is statutorily obligated to oversee the health department. So I, I don't know why we're allowing this continuous, unlawful, no due process for these students, literally thousands of students to continue to be quarantined without due process. They're not sick. They're almost never passing COVID. Um, they're just being denied their education. Um, based on the code, it says, 
um, the language is plain. It supports this conclusion that providing when a local health department adopts a regulation <coughs> shall be approved or disapproved by the local governing entity. MCL 333.2441, those regulations only become effective after receiving approval. Um, clearly, Michigan law requires that local governing entity oversee ultimately approved regulations issued by the local health department before they obtain any force of law. Um, but I find it really odd that the health department include in my FOIA information, which I show here, it says Livingston County Health Department has not issued any public health orders regarding face mask, quarantine, or testing of school aged children. How are they getting away with quarantining our kids? You have then? 15 seconds. Um, I, I just hope that you guys can look up some of these codes. I'll email them to all of you. I think you have the power to supersede the appointed position because you are elected by us. Thank you. Anybody else in the room? Awesome. No. You provide your name and um, township, you'll have three minutes. Hello, my name is Yvonne Black. I live in Marion Township. And I did send some emails, but I just wanted to put it on the record. Um, neither the Livingston County Health Officer, Diane McCormick, nor public school superintendents have legal authority to practice isolation, quarantine in public schools. MCL 333.5207 gives quarantine authority to the Livingston County Circuit Court after a health department representative or the health officer files an affidavit with the court and must prove to the court the child is a carrier and a health threat to others, not just a close contact. I have heard hundreds of students and parents over the past months express that this isolation and quarantine is causing children serious mental harm. Under MCL 750.136B, serious mental harm is recognized as child abuse. Under MCL 380.1307B, school personnel in the public schools are prohibited from practicing child abuse and seclusion, which is isolation and quarantine. So this isolation quarantine causing serious mental health to children attending public schools must immediately cease and we just need our um, county commissioners to support the children and, um, and all of this stuff. For them. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here in the room? Um, Commissioner Plank. Hi. Um, thank you. I, uh, I just want to bring it to um, the attention that there is an initiation of legislation amending the Michigan election law in 1954. And so there's a series of numbers. I won't read them to you. But um, to require partial Social Security number for voter registration, require photo ID for in-person voters, require driver's license, state ID, partial social security number, or photo ID on absentee ballot application, require voters who, do not, who don't provide this ID to present, present ID in person within six days after election to have their vote counted, provide state funded IDs to applicants with hardships, specify minimum times, clerks must accept absentee ballots for in-person or drop box delivery, prohibit officials from making absentee ballot applications available except upon voter request, prohibit donations to fund elections. So this petition is going around. Um, so I just wanted to make everybody aware that um, if you see this, uh, I think it's a great thing. Uh, I think our legislature tried to pass it, but it got vetoed um, by our governor. So um, if we can get, I think it's 350,000 something signatures, uh, then they'll take it up at the legislature and pass it. And um, it won't need to go to the governor to be passed. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see if there's anybody on Zoom. Um, um, yeah, so Jennifer Smith. Hey, commissioners. Um, I just want to read a message uh, to you guys that Nicole and I received from a parent uh, from Moms for Liberty tonight. Today, my son was sent home from school because he coughed in gym class and had a slightly runny nose. 
He told me that he coughed a couple of times and his gym teacher sent him to the office. The nurse evaluated him, kept him for a bit, did not hear any coughing and he returned to gym class. Immediately when he returned, the gym teacher sent him back to the office to call home because he was sick. This kid is now quarantined for 14 days. His mom is staying home from work for 14 days. And I just want to know when the gym teacher got her medical degree further. All of this is a cyclical pattern of behavior where parents are frustrated. Parents are upset. They're taking their concerns to the school. The school is then cyclically telling them, go to the health department. And what does the health department do? They either block us. They have no return calls. And then we're back to going to the school, which then turns us back to going to the health department. So I want to bring something up to you that is very, very concerning to me as a parent. And this is not with wearing my mom's for liberty hat, okay? The attorney general has now decided that I am a domestic terrorist for going to school board meetings and defending my children's right for an education. So can you imagine the thought process of a parent who has been to the office, to Dr. Outlaw, to the board, to the health department, only to get passed back to Dr. Outlaw, to the board, to the school office repeatedly over and over again? This is not only a mental health issue, but it is completely out of control. And I, I don't understand where it stops. And I'm supposed to help people, but I have no other answers and it feels like no one's hearing us. So I wanna just finish my statement with this. Commissioners, I am begging you to please put an end to this. I'm begging you to please do that. Have a great night. Thank you. Anybody else on Zoom? Uh, Jane Suarez Ford, if you provide your full name and uh, township, you'll have three minutes. Jane Suarez Forward, Brighton Township. I just wanted to um, uh, circle back to uh, something that was brought up at a recent meeting uh, by the uh, director of the EMS department. Um, he gave a, uh, what I would call a uh, state of the state departmental address. Um, he described his department as understaffed, underpaid, overworked, and turnover high. So I thought about that, and I'm hoping for a report soon from Chairman Nakagiri regarding this critical service. I know um, from my own personal experience that it affects a lot of senior citizens in this county and we can't afford delayed response times resulting in possible tragedy to our citizens, even uh, you know, seniors and really regardless of any age or any circumstance anywhere in our county. So I hope that there's some movement regarding this issue uh, happening behind the scenes and that soon we'll get a report on how, um, how that's improving, that it, that's, that's not being forgotten about because that is very critical. And that's all I want. I just wanted to put a reminder out there. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on Zoom? Uh, seeing none, I'm gonna go ahead and close the call to public and um, Reminded that there is a second call to public later in the uh, meeting. Um, so next item uh, is item number eight. It's approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes, uh, one dated September 27th, the other dated October 6th. I'm looking for a motion to approve both sets of minutes. So moved. Support, Halserman. Motion by Commissioner Zajac, support by uh, Commissioner Halserman. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving both sets of minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, 
Item nine is tabled items from previous meetings. There are no tabled items. So we'll move on to item 10, which is approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So move, Helzerman. Motion by Commissioner Helzerman, support by Commissioner Plank. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, item number 11, our reports. Uh, any commissioners with reports tonight? Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner Zajac. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Nakagiri. I just want to give a brief report. Uh, one of the topics, obviously, that is of importance to us is the COVID-19 treatment process, uh, how kids are uh, being addressed in schools and, and those uh, things we hear often about. Uh, Commissioner Plank and I have been involved in an ad hoc group, I'll call it. I won't even call it a committee because it's ad hoc. Um, and it consists of Commissioner Plank and I, uh, two superintendents, from, one from Howell, one from Brighton, uh, Commissioner or Administrator Bird, as well as uh, the superintendent of Lisa and the superintendent of a private um, school here in the county. And we have been working with this group since actually, I think within a couple of weeks after we took office or maybe before we took office, but after we were elected, uh, just to bridge a gap of communication. The, the intent was uh, first, how do we involve students in the county business? Can we set up some internships? Can somebody who's interested in welding go hang out with our drain commissioner and figure out how to fix that big equipment that he works on? Or can uh, Miss Katnack have a special assistant a couple of days a week that wants to learn county finance or whatever the case might be? Um, and so obviously that's transitioned to a much broader topic. It involved discussion, a very good discussion, heated discussion at times on the CRT topic when it was um, very uh, uh, prevalent in our community. And most recently, obviously, with regards to COVID. Uh, we participated in a meeting leading up to um, a decision by our health department as well as the school districts. Um, it was about two weeks ago. Uh, the purpose of that meeting was to push for uh, more clarity on why we were making decisions uh, with regards to uh, what was then called quarantining, what is now uh, uh, more properly described as exclusion. Um, as a result of that meeting, the school districts met with uh, Administrator Bird as well as with uh, the health department and came up with a, a step forward, I'll say. I, I think our, our health director has been, uh, I, I, don't, I don't want this to be taken out of context, but more liberal than most in the application of the rules, uh, being able to not uh, over overdo what the state has recommended or overdo what the feds have recommended. Uh, as an example, uh, until recently, we were following an eight-day quarantine process while the state was still following a 10-day quarantine process. And, and as I said, uh, what's now more properly labeled as exclusion. But nonetheless, that's an example of us uh, doing not as uh, much of a, uh, not doing the same requirements that are being set by the state and doing it uh, in, I think, a better way. So anyway, uh, the, the big issue with quarantining, and as I said, is now better described as exclusions, is uh, the distance, right? Anybody that's six feet from somebody else, maybe possibly you were uh, sent home and you had to stay home. Uh, and we came up with this process that was uh, able to allow you to test out of that staying home, uh, but still the six feet is an issue. Uh, so now as of last week, um, effective immediately, at least in one of the school districts, um, the, the six foot spacing was now changed to three feet. Uh, I would say that Commissioner Nakagiri and I are more than three feet apart. And I think that, that the school district that I'm uh, familiar with is, is treating it as such now. A case by case application, sure, but I think it's a step in the right direction um, to even if there is a lack of authority in some regards to how the commission can act in a public health situation. Uh, it shows a great deal of cooperation, in my view anyway, um, of taking steps in the correct direction. Uh, and as far as I know, there is no other district in the state, uh, county in the state especially, um, that is adopting this three foot uh, social distance, uh, I don't know, the close contact definition without a mask um, anywhere else. So I think uh, and I invite Commissioner Plank to fill in any gaps, but I think that that's a very positive thing uh, and very much it was in support of that progress. And I think that's all. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Other commissioners? Commissioner Plank. I just want to add to that, um, that uh, it was a very rewarding moment for us when um, we found out that the uh, 
that Diane McCormick had agreed to go from six feet to three feet. Uh, we do believe that that's going to cut back on um, students being sent home um, due to close contact. Um, and uh, so I believe this is on a 30 day trial and um, I believe it was 2% of kids testing positive for COVID. Uh, this is, we needed benchmarking numbers um, to kind of put something in place because uh, like we talked about on the call with um, our superintendents that uh, we just didn't have anything to go by, anything to measure um, what steps we needed to take and what we could fix. And so we're using this 2% um, and hopefully that uh, after 30 days, we can find that, um, that this has not caused any more uh, kids to get uh, COVID or test positive for COVID, I should say. Um, and so uh, I think this is a step in the right direction. Um, I know that uh, we hear from parents a lot, um, even tonight, uh, the concerns that they have, but I'm really, really hoping that this is something that uh, is gonna be a, su a success story. Um, and, uh, and I was very um, excited uh, that this, uh, this is taking place right now. So that's all I have. Thank you. Anybody else? We will uh, close the reports and move on to item number 12, which is approval of consent agenda items. This evening we have um, resolutions 2021-10-157 through 2021-10-169. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So move, Groves. 162, is that, or one? 161. Well, 161, sorry. Support. Uh, who made the motion? Uh, motion by Commissioner Gross, support by Commissioner Zajac. Um, any discussion? Um, roll call. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Plank. Yes. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Reeder. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Commissioner Helzerman. Yes. Commissioner Drick. Yes. Commissioner Zajac. Yes. Commissioner Griffin. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, next up, uh, resolutions for consideration. The first one up for consideration is 2021-10-162. It's a resolution authorizing an agreement with the Economic Development Council to provide support for countywide assistance from 2022 through 2024. Is there a motion? Move the resolution, Griffin. Support. support motion by Commissioner Griffith, support by Commissioner Plank. Um, anybody going to present on this? Uh... Um, no, um, I don't really have anything else to add other than what we've talked about at the last two meetings, but I will point out that both uh, Marsha and Phil are with us again via Zoom. I appreciate their attendance uh, again. And so if there are remaining questions, um, we can certainly address those. I also wanna point out that a few of the items that came up at the last discussion have since been uh, provided to the board, 990s for Spark, uh, benchmark study that talked about some utility issues in the county. And so if there's anything else we can provide you, we're happy to do it. But um, if there are questions, I would uh, refer those to Marsha or Phil. Um, thank you. Questions? Um, just share. Um, I have uh, been, uh, very pleased with uh, what Marsha has done for us. Uh, she uh, has met with uh, me and my wife on several occasions and had very good conversations. Just want to give uh, the rest of the board some of the historic background uh, and how we arrived at the $175,000 amount. Uh, it had been either 200,000 or 250,000 previously but uh, when, uh, when we went from having um, our own uh, person, uh, Fred Dillingham, working underneath the uh, Livingston County Economic Development, uh, which had worked out you know, quite well for quite a few years, when that changed, uh, then uh, it was decided to, to move SPARP in. And initially, uh, Spark did not um, have a dedicated person uh, like Marsha 
uh, who uh, fits very well into Livingston County. Uh, and there was a uh, there was a question about uh, the support of the EDC by the uh, business community whom they serve. Uh, that uh, there would uh, be uh, monies coming uh, not just from the public sector but also from the private sector. And we had felt uh, the board had felt, and and I was part of that had felt that that spark at that particular point had not uh, brought um, enough uh, money for their operations from the business community. Uh, and we uh, agreed on 175, which was taken down. And we also did a, did a series of one-year contracts uh, trying to improve that uh, their, their, um, involvement and their participation, not just from us, but from the business people who, whom they served. Um, and, uh, and that was kind of uh, in, in the transition uh, period. Uh, since that time, uh, as I said, Marcia has been brought on to, uh, to be basically uh, our Livingston County representative, which to me, uh, has made a huge uh, difference in uh, the relationship between uh, Livingston County Board and Spark, uh, and uh, uh, and I think Marcia deserves a lot of credit. She's done a lot of good work. Uh, our, I, I'm from the West Side, uh, Handy Township. Uh, has been over the years a recipient of many of the. Um, uh, many of Fred Dillingham's act, actions and, and now uh, through a Spark and through Marsha, that has continued. Uh, and so I just wanted to give some of you that are new uh, to the commission a little historic background. Uh, this, uh, uh, this, is, this relationship has not, didn't start out uh, without its bumps and uh and but i'm very happy that uh, we have a dedicated person so i i favor this uh, i think it's good for for my district especially handy township and the village of fowlerville and i'll be supporting this and uh, thank you marcia for all your good work we appreciate it thank you. any other commissioner smith yeah, I also want to uh, re reiterate uh, Councilman Hesserman's thoughts there. We have been the beneficiary, especially the last 24 months, of seeing how powerful our association with Spark uh, can be. Uh, not only was Marsha and her team instrumental in helping spread the word uh, for the various uh, programs available to businesses in the community through the CARES Act, uh, she also put on, uh, I don't know how many presentations uh, to business owners and team meetings and Zoom meetings. Uh, she worked tireless, tirelessly to uh, make sure that uh, as many uh, uh, businesses and uh, chambers of commerce, et cetera, that are all represented in our community uh, knew what resources were available. She worked with all the bankers, uh, even this evil one, and uh, spread the word to all the clients about how uh, you know they, they they could find some money to to get through uh, what was a very difficult time, and that included uh, working with the state as well, uh, not just the federal CARES Act, but there were various grants offered that that uh, through the fast work of Phil and his team and Marsha included were instrumental in seeing a lot of business owners. And these are not large corporations. These are small business owners through a very trying time. And uh, so I, I have been associated on and off with Spark as a member of the business community since I think their inception uh, when they had a, a less than a thousand square feet leased in, on Liberty Road in Ann Arbor. 
and I begged him, I know Fred well, and begged him to come out here. And, and uh, I'm so pleased that now they have uh, actually over two full-time employees in the area and strongly encourage us to continue this relationship. Anybody else, any other commissioners? Uh, we have a motion in support. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, I, I'm opposed. Motion, motion carries. Um, next resolution is 2021-10-163. Uh, it's a resolution appointing members to the Livingston County Board of Canvassers. Move the resolution. I think, I think uh, Joe. Joe Bridgman. Yeah. Motion, um, we have mo ballots that we have to deal with. Right, right. Just a second. Yeah. Motion by Commissioner Zajac, support by, who, is that you, Commissioner Plank? Yeah. Commissioner Plank. Mr. Bridgman. Be gentle, this is my first time getting to come up here. So, um, so before you, you should have the resolution in front of you and a, a memo from Clerk Hundley. Um, laying out uh, the three particular candidates for the Democratic Party and the three candidates for the Republican Party. So um, every odd year, we have to appoint for a four-year term uh, a de Democrat to the Board of Canvassers, and then we have to also uh, appoint a Republican candidate. Um, the clerk has put together the memo recommending reappointing um, Judy... Uh, Williams, which has been a phenomenal uh, person on our board of canvassers and has done a f fantastic job for us. This would be starting her second term. She has uh, served since 2017. And then for the Republican uh, Party members, uh, we had new names uh, presented, which was Jane Cartwright, which is the former Howell City Clerk. Um, she would be phenomenal. She would also served as um, the uh, uh, city clerk or township clerk in Howell for a period of time. And we also have Joan Runyon, which has also served as the election coordinator, which I replaced Joan when she retired. So either one of those candidates would be <coughs> phenomenal to serve on the board of canvassers. Um, so the way the process works is I'm going to hand you all a ballot. You get to vote the ballot. I'll collect them, then I will tally them up, and then uh, let you know what the tally is, and then you can then move to appoint those particular individuals. Okay, is that questions? How will we handle the Zoom folks? Um, the Zoom votes, um, Carol Griffin has submitted her ballot already. You could say it was absentee. Um, I won't say that, but you could. Um, and uh, Commissioner Reeder, um, we sent her her ballot, but um, I may need her to confirm who she voted for because I didn't, wasn't able to receive that this evening. So according to um, legal counsel, um, I will be able to actually mark her ballot for her um, tonight. Um, but I will do that in the presence of potentially someone else so that we know that we're doing that correctly, if that's okay with you folks. It's good. Good. And we make comments before we vote. Uh, yes, Commissioner Helzerman. I uh, just wanted to uh, uh, bring to your attention, I believe Darlene uh, Dominic is uh, with us uh, tonight. I don't know who else is with us. Uh, um, uh, on uh, Zoom, but I just wanted to recognize her uh, here. Um, and I don't know if you are giving anybody any time to speak, uh, but I, um, uh, when I first put my name in for, um, uh, for commissioner, Joan Runyon was the one who did it. Uh, uh, Joan is a very good person. Uh, in fact, she, uh, when it came time to give me a, a fine, she had no problem giving me a fine. So, <laughs> so uh, she, she's not she's not partial. Also, I had the chance of 
Uh, I had some questions during the, during the last primary election. I, and so I attended a can, board of canvassers and got to see them in action. Uh, they received my comments very well. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we're very blessed with the uh, people that we have serving in this role. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else? Any other questions, comments from commissioners? So it just leaves uh, voting. Do we need to put our name on this? Our name's already on there. Okay. So this is Thank not you. a secret okay. ballot. It's just okay. an official ballot. Okay. You don't have to fold it. If uh, Commissioner Reader would like to, she, she is voting for. Commissioner Reader. Yes. I tried to send it in, but I gave up after half an hour. I'm a little, I'm a little uh, under the weather today, so I wasn't able to do a lot. Um, yeah. So Judy Williams. All right. And then <clears throat> the last one is on the bottom. I can't think of his name. So you have um, for the Republican, I uh, didn't, you have um, choice of Jane Cartwright, Joan Runyon and Jeffrey Wiggins. Okay, Jeffrey Wiggins. All right. Thank you. Thank you. taken by Zoom and uh, filled out by Wes Mockinger. I witnessed for you, <laughs> notary. Are you a notary? I am. It's with the job title, yeah. have to. No, they should be, it's free. <laughs> So what I have is it looks like that there were seven votes cast for Judy Williams, Wait. two votes for Gretchen and, and one vote for Darlene. Um, so that would make the Judy Williams uh, would be the candidate uh, for Republican. I had one vote for Jane Cartwright, five votes for Joan Runyon and three for Jeff uh, Wiggins. So the two that would be uh, appointed this evening by you folks would be Judy Williams for the Democratic Party and Republican Party would be Joan Runyon and they would be serving a four year term. Well, congratulations to um, Joan and Judy. All right. these, these ballots will be available for public inspection. Correct, yes. Well, it, I mean, I, uh, they're not secret ballots. I mean, so- Correct. Will, will it show in the minutes how the commissioners voted? It, yes, it okay. could, absolutely. Okay. Should, should we make that public now or what? I, what did everyone do? What, was it my motion? I think so. Okay, I'll, I'll, can, um, I'll amend my motion to include uh, the results in the minutes. Okay. 
if it's Commissioner Plank, did she support my original? Yeah, I think so. Originally? I just shook my head. But <laughs> okay, so if Commissioner Plank uh, takes a friendly amendment to my amendment, then we don't have to vote twice. All right, all those uh, in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Uh, just for, I, I, I'm going to go and I used to say for the record, I mean, you'll see it in the minutes, but uh, I cast my vote for Judy Williams and Joan Runyon. All right. Um, next up is uh, resolution 2021-10-164. It's a resolution authorizing the annual 2021 apportionment report. Is there a motion? So moved, Halserman. Support Gross. Motion by Commissioner Halserman, support by Commissioner Gross. Hi, Sue. Before you are all the millage rates. Uh, special assessments be levied this year. Okay. So um, everything has been calculated. It's all calculated with the Headley rollback. Um, everything is, everybody's 4029 was, I mean, well received. So um, these are the, you know, uh, millages that go forth this year. Anybody have any questions? Um, I just, Commissioner uh, this is this is a, a special meeting, uh, statutory meeting, and <clears throat> and we left the statutory thing to the very last. We probably should have done it first, right, Sue? <laughs> I preferred it. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so uh, this was uh, one of the uh, eye openers that uh, that I had when I came to the commission. That we are we are in fact. Um, authorizing all of these taxes. Okay, so if you say, how many, how many uh, taxes has uh, the commission uh, authorized? Well, we have, you know, there's quite a few mills there. <laughs> then, uh, and we still might be the lowest taxing uh, unit, co county, even counting all that together. But uh, thank you for your work. And, um, it's uh, one of those, uh, you know, death and taxes. Um, one of those things that we all have to deal with, and we're happy that we have you dealing with the the live part of that equation, the taxes. So, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else? Um, roll call vote. Commissioner Helsman. Uh, yes. Commissioner Drick. Yes. Commissioner Zajac. Yes. Commissioner Griffith. Yes. Commissioner Gross. Yes. Commissioner Plank. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Reeder. Yes. Commissioner Nakagiri. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, we're at our second call to the public. Anybody wishing to address the Board of Commissioners? We'll start here in the room. Um, please uh, give us your full name and your township. You'll have three minutes. Hello again, my name is Yvonne Black and I'm in uh, Marion Township. And I just wanted to, um, I, I think it's funny. It's just funny, exclusion, quarantine, isolate, seclusion. It's all the same thing. It's, it's, it's unbelievable that we were just like laughing about this. It's, this is very serious. These children are um, having serious mental harm done to them for, whatever you want to call it, exclusion, seclusion, quarantine, isolation. Um, MCL 3335207 is the health code. You have to go through the circuit court. The health department cannot just exclude. The schools cannot seclude. That is in the law. So I really think that the county commissioners need to take a serious look at our laws that um, are denying our children due process. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the room? I see a couple, three hands on Zoom. We'll start with uh, Ms. Cowan. If you give us your full name and, and uh, township, you'll have three minutes. Okay, thank you. My name is Lori Cowan. I'm from Unadilla Township. And just two things I wanted to point out. 
um, the petition that Commissioner Plank was speaking of at the first call to the public is only trying to be passed to take away voting rights to make it much harder to vote. So don't be fooled. It is not good. And I'm hoping everyone will vote no on that. And then also, I just wanted to say that I was in attendance in Howell on October 5th to welcome Joe Biden, our president, and support the Build Back Better plan. And I'm forever changed after being there. Um, there were hundreds of people that were there that was organized by the Michigan Republican Party and Moms for Liberty in support of Trump. And I have never seen such hate, such vulgarity and disregard for civility. It was the most disturbing thing I have ever been to in my life. And I just wanted to let everyone know because this was not portrayed accurately in the newspapers and the Republican party and moms of Liberty should all be ashamed of what took place. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up will be uh, Jennifer Smith. If you provide your name and township, you'll have three minutes. I am back again. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Genoa Township. I'm not going to address other people that have spoke out, but um, that's nonsense is all I'm going to say. Um, I actually was going to log off after the last call to public and um, because I'm actually very emotionally wrecked tonight. And then someone texted me and said, you really need to hear what they're talking about. So I came back on and I listened. And um, I'm even more emotionally wrecked than when I walked off the first time. And I'm gonna tell you why, because you guys have listened to these parents. You've gotten the letters, you've gotten the emails, you've seen us protest. I mean, literally we're out of places to protest. And it's like, you think giving us a three foot reduction in quarantine is throwing us a bone after you've slapped us in the face multiple times and you just don't care about our kids. And it's becoming sickening. So I, I'm sorry if you think that this is a win. It isn't a win for a parent. I would like to know which one of you would like to console the parent who has to take two weeks off of work and go without pay because the gym teacher decided her child should be quarantined. Not a nurse or anyone with a medical degree, but the gym teacher. After the school nurse said, the child was fine. This is what's going on every day, every day. And I'm gonna speak to this one more time and I really hope I reach one of you because I feel like I have passionately spoke to you all, I respect you all, but I really hope you hear me when I say this. This is a mental health problem in our community. When are you going to stop parents feeling like they have no outlet? Just because you gave us a three foot reduction in quarantine, that's a bone and we're, oh, well, everyone else is doing nothing, but we're giving you three feet. So be happy and be quiet. I'll let the other 1500 people behind me know that. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, next will be Elena. If you give us your full name and township, you'll have three minutes. I mean, hi, um, it's Alina and I'm calling from Osceola Township. Um, I just wanted to echo some of the same sentiments that Jennifer did. Um, I've, I've spoke at the meetings before in regards to quarantines and um, truthfully, my kiddos are actually in a very blessed situation. We attend um, and I'll leave the place unnamed, but we are not quarantining our children. We are not masking our children. There are no COVID pre precautions. If the children are sick, they stay home. And we have been in session just as long as all the other schools in Livingston County have been. And my children are blessed for that. There are four children in Livingston County and there's countless other children that attend the same place. So I, I, I realize, um, you know, I've heard the stories time and time again, our hands are tied. It's the schools, it's the health department, it's the county commissioners. Somebody is not being held liable for this or held responsible. And we need to stop placing the blame on somebody else. And you need to step up and stand up for our children. Um, we need to protect our children and parents are doing the best that they can. 
Uh, we've had parents that are bringing their children to school saying, we demand that you allow my child, my healthy child to be in school. Um, we need our county commissioners now. We need you to say you stand alongside us. Um, we know what's best for our children. And when there is no action, um, our health department isn't being held responsible. Our health director has no public health order. I have a FOIA paper, which we've passed around many times. I've shared it numerous times with our superintendents. There is no public health order. They cannot enforce these unlawful quarantines on our children any longer. I don't know what it's gonna take. Um, I'm, I'm asking, what do, you, what, do, what do the parents have to do? Because um, I know a lot of them aren't in this position. I'm very blessed and fortunate to be able to offer this situation to my children and they are living their best life. They are living a normal childhood. They are not quarantined. They are going to school. They are healthy. And if they're sick, they stay home. It's common sense. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Anna Pinella, if you give us your full name and township, you'll have three minutes. Uh, hello again. Uh, I, my name is Anna Pinella from Brighton Township. Um, I thank you guys for your time. I do sincerely appreciate each and every one of you and the effort that you put in. Um, I am at a loss as a parent um, in this district. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear someone else talking to you. Um, I just, I don't know what to do regarding how to determine the legality of the quarantines. I, I would appreciate if someone could respond to an email showing me the MCL codes that the health department is using and they're, where they find their authority. I, I do appreciate the three foot reduction. I think that will help. However, obviously there's an acknowledgement that what's going on is wrong, um, but we can't just band-aid it. We need to um, find a solution to the to the problem. So if the health director is escaping um, liability by not making a public health order, and then I, I have documentation from the health department that said there's they are not quarantined children yet. If you go to the health department, there's literally a table set up inside their office that has a table and a sign that says quarantined students. So if they're not doing this, why is that sign there? And then I also have a paper from the um, superintendent of my school district that says Brighton Area Schools is not quarantining students, but they are. Everyone knows it. I mean, this is, so the circular game is just continuing. I, I appreciate the reduction. I do, I think it will help. However, it is not the root cause of the problem. There is due process in this country. The health, the county commission supersedes the health department. And I implore you to find a way. Actually in Ottawa County on September 20th of of this year, 2021, there's a lawsuit that's being filed that emphasizes um, the county commission's uh, statutory authority over the health department director based on the fact that that person is not elected. So hopefully we'll find the results of um, that before a judge and we can find some case law to support ending these quarantines. I, I appreciate your concern. I hope we can work together to um, help out our kids in this county. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nicole, if you give us your full name and uh, township, you'll have three minutes. Nicole, you should be all set to unmute. Should we try um, Jennifer? Hi, good evening, commissioners. This is Jennifer from Howell Township. Um, Jennifer Cross. Um, I just, I don't have anything prepared. The only thing I want to say is that I hope you guys know that whatever decision you make is not going to be happy for them. They're not going to be happy. They're not, you know, they're protesting masks. We don't have a mask mandate. Um, they got their three feet reduction. Um, and, you know, here we have um, 
almost six or 700 cases in Livingston County this year. We've only, it's October. So I just hope that you guys know, like I said, if it's not masks, if it's not quarantine, it's going to be CRT. It's going to be something. They're going to be upset because the black, the sky is blue. So we are asking you to believe in the scientists and public health officials. That's what we are asking you to believe in. And I mean, heck, people teach science in our schools. So it's really hard for me to understand why we are denouncing science when we teach it in our schools. So thank you for listening to me. I hope you guys have a good night. I appreciate everything that you do. And just remember, nothing you do is going to make them happy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nicole, we'll try you again. I'm not sure if Nicole is still there or not. Um, how about, uh, I see uh, Judy Williams uh, waving at us. So she's been waving for a while. If we could unmute Judy Williams. I just want to thank the uh, Board of Commissioners for appointing me and giving me your trust. I swear I will do a great job as a Board of Canvas member and do my best and spend a lot of time studying the elections. So anyways, thank you for giving me your trust. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cindy McNevich, I hope I got that right after all these times. Did I? Yes, you did. Thank you. Um, Cindy McNevich from Hamburg Township. I just want to um, talk a little bit about that Secure My Vote petition. Um, it's an initiative that will ne negatively affect voters, specifically people with disabilities, people with lower incomes, and young people who all have more difficulty obtaining a type of ID that will be required to vote. The proposed changes are unnecessary and may <clears throat> make voting more difficult, which is the opposite of what Michigan voters um, voted for two elections ago. Secure My Vote has received a approval of a petition with the state's Board of Canvassers to enact a citizens-led legislation to take away election day voting options, make absentee voting less accessible, and gut funding for the election administration in Michigan. Um, so I want people to really read what they will be signing if they choose to sign it. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any more hands raised um, in Zoom, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the call to the public and ask um, for a motion to adjourn. So move, Helzerman. Support Plank. Motion by Commissioner Helzerman, support by Commissioner Plank. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned. <laughs>